Anastasia. Um, the Vietnamese nationalists and communists then fought the French. The French returned to Southeast Asia and tried to retake, re retake their old Southeast Asian colonies. Well, the Vietnamese nationalists wanted to be independent. They didn't want to be a French colony. So along with their leader, Ho Chi Minh, the nationalists and communists fought the French. And after nine years of struggle, this was ultimately successful. In 1954, the French were defeated comprehensively uh, military defeat at Dien Bien Phu and the French agreed to pull out of Vietnam. The, the details of what would then happen to Vietnam were worked out in 1954 at the Geneva Accords. So let's look in a little bit of detail at what was agreed in the Geneva Accords. Well, what was agreed was that Vietnam would be split along the 17th parallel. Viet, Viet Minh forces would pull out of South Vietnam and French forces would pull out of North Vietnam and then pull out of Vietnam altogether. North Vietnam was to be controlled by Ho Chi Minh and South Vietnam was to be ruled by Ngo Dinh Diem until there were to be free elections within two years. So these free elections are supposed to be held by July of 1956 across Vietnam to decide how the country would be reunified. Well, that was what was agreed at Geneva. What actually happened? Enter the Viet Cong. So the communists were in power in North Vietnam. In 1954, however, the US actually prevented elections from taking place. They feared the communists would actually win democratic elections and so prevented them. Eisenhower is later quoted as saying he believed that up to 80% may have actually voted for Ho Chi Minh. In 1955, the Americans helped Ngo Dinh Diem, this man here, set up the Republic of South Vietnam. But Ngo Dinh Diem was really very unpopular. He was corrupt. In other words, he stole uh, Vietnamese, the money of the Vietnamese people to enrich himself. He was nepotistic. Uh, nepotism means when you give jobs and, in his case, government contracts to your own family rather than to the best qualified candidate. You want to enrich your family and yourself. Uh, and he was, yeah, he was very unpopular. He was a Catholic when the majority of South Vietnamese were Buddhists. Catholicism was the, the religion of the old French occupying forces. He was of the wealthy landowning classes who were seen as exploiters by the majority of South Vietnamese peasants as well. So a number of reasons why Jim was unpopular. Well, the North knew this and in 1959, uh, the North decided to encourage more rebellion in the South. And to help foster this rebellion, they sent down Southern Communists, who were soon dubbed by the, the South Vietnamese Army Viet Cong, which is a sort of slang word which means Vietnamese Communists. So these Southern Communists returned to fight. It's important at this stage to make very clear the Viet Cong were a communist uh, guerrilla insurgency group. So they were paramilitary. They were not the official army of North Vietnam. They were both fighting for the same thing, for the unification of Vietnam under communism, under Ho Chi Minh. But the Viet Cong were a guerrilla force based in South Vietnam and the North Vietnamese army was the regular army of North Vietnam. So involvement of the United States. From 1954, the South was really dependent. It was propped up by aid from the United States. So why was, why was the United States doing that? Why was the United States sending economic and military aid to the government of South Vietnam? Well, the US policy was based on something called the domino theory. The, at the time, the, the US policymakers believed that if Vietnam fell, then neighboring states would also collapse and fall under communism, like dominoes falling one by one. If you look at the illustration, you see they felt if Vietnam fell, then soon after Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, India and so on would fall to communism. This is related to the theory of containment. They didn't want communism to spill out of, his ex out of its existing borders. And they used this theory to justify involvement. Well, from 1954, they were already sending economic and military aid. In November of 1961, Kennedy began to increasingly support the army in the South with US troops called combat advisors. Now, it's important to make the point that these were not actively fighting against the Viet Cong. They were training the South Vietnamese army, especially in counterinsurgency and anti-guerrilla tactics. The fall of Jem. So if you see these two photographs here, uh, the photograph at the top is actually of a, of a, of a Buddhist monk 
who has set himself on fire in protest against the anti-Buddhist policies of Jem. And at the bottom is Jem, who came to a rather sticky end, as we will see. So Jem, he'd been installed, effectively installed by the US, but he became less popular and less useful to them. He had shown that he could not defeat the rebel Viet Cong. Um, the US was aware of his unpopularity in the South because of the level of corruption, because of the anti-Buddhist policies. And so when a cadre, when a group of South Vietnamese generals, they, they were anti-communists as well, um, said, you know, basically floated the idea past the Americans, do you mind if we overthrow Jim? Basically, they, they are given approval, or certainly there is no opposition from the US. So Jem is overthrown in a military coup and replaced by a cadre of South Vietnamese generals. They are also uh, rather corrupt and unpopular, though, right up to the fall of the South Vietnamese regime. So let's move on. 1964, very important. Make a note of 1964, the Gulf of Tonkin incident. In 1964, regular North Vietnamese army were marching down the Ho Chi Minh Trail to support the Viet Cong. The Ho Chi Minh Trail was a network of jungle paths which ran from North Vietnam, actually through Laos and Cambodia, and then re-entered South Vietnam, allowing the North Vietnamese to supply the Viet Cong, but bypassing any military opposition, hopefully, along the way. South Vietnam looked increasingly doomed. It could not take on the Viet Cong and defeat them, especially with the support of the North Vietnamese army. Now, let's, well, let's look what happens next. On the 2nd of August 1964, so August 1964, an American destroyer, that's an American naval ship, was attacked by North Vietnamese ships in the Gulf of Tonkin. President Johnson then ordered the bombing of North Vietnamese naval bases in retaliation. He then went to the United States Congress and persuaded them to pass the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. This was very, very important. August the 7th, 1964, he was authorised to take all necessary steps, including the use of armed force. It gave President Johnson full authority to step up American involvement in the war, to directly commit large amounts of American troops to directly fight against the Viet Cong. And that's what he started to do. In 1965, US ground troops arrived. Let's look at what led, led up to that. In February of 1965, the Viet Cong launched attacks on US air bases. If you remember, Operation Rolling Thunder had begun. So that there were US air bases there bombing North Vietnam. Well, the Viet Cong attacked those. Johnson uh, ordered a, a 